Good evening, welcome to the Film Channel. My name is Daik Muru. We are at the Zone Rose Bank to enjoy some cinema nouveau. I have with me an academic and film historian, Dr. Ahmed Gurata. Dr. Gurata, thank you so very much for joining us this evening on the Film Channel. Welcome. Thank you very much. Now, uh, we want to delve straight into the questions. Now, we want to talk about, for example, the uh, criticism, uh, mm. film theory, mm. and the history of film in Turkey right. and internationally. How do all of these come together and how do they relate uh, to the Turkish film scene? Okay, um, Okay. just a brief history. I mean, it yes. emerged in the late 19th century, the Turkish cinema, mm -hmm. uh, with some short films first. And then up until 1960s, it was a very sort of a, uh, let's say, um, not a big industry. I mean, there were films shot one film perhaps a year, mm. but then with the 60s, thanks to sort of the kind of a tax uh, support by the government, uh, suddenly the industry boomed. And at the time in the 60s and 70s, that was the sort of the golden age of Turkish cinema. And, uh, and at one point in the early 70s, Turkey was the fifth largest film producing country with 300 films a year. Wow. So yeah, and uh, it was like mainly popular films, of course, melodramas and comedies, mm -hmm. and this lasted until mid 70s. And then the, with the penetration of television in Turkey, uh, there came a crisis which lasted until 1990s. Yes. And uh, so the last past 20 years, we are witnessing a new renaissance of Turkish cinema. Mm -hmm. And we have now, like you know, uh, a very successful big industry, which is the kind of the seventh largest growing uh, industry in the Europe, and um, wow. and uh, we have very successful films in film festivals around the world, and um, so that's kind of a recent revival in, in Turkish film history. Um, and then, of course, we can talk about you know what's the uh, this is sort of the, the the bright side of the coin, yes. but on the uh, other side of the coin, we have some problems, of course, uh, namely the uh, the problem with uh, distribution and uh, exhibition in Turkey is controlled by one or two companies. So we have a kind of a monopolistic kind of structure there. So uh, for films like we have screened in this festival, like Frenzy and Ivy, uh, it's very difficult to get uh, movie theaters uh, to screen the, those films. Yes. Um, just to give you an idea, like now there's over 2,000 screens in Turkey altogether, but most of it, uh, like uh, let's say 80% of the show of the same films, many Turkish films, but popular Turkish films. Yes. So for these kind of other films, independent films, uh, they can only have very limited release. So that's the downside of this sort of renaissance. I mean, on one hand, you have a very powerful uh, film industry. Uh, you have films, Turkish films, uh, share a good percentage of the film market, more than 50%, which is, I think, again, uh, important. But then again, it's, uh, there is this sort of uh, uh, popular films over other films. Yeah, there's this kind of their, their domination. Uh, Dr. Gurate, you touched on the resurgence of Turkish filmmaking uh, in the 90s. Now, you guys have also enjoyed in the past what is known as the Yeselkom era, yes. which is pretty much the equivalent yes. of the Hollywood uh, golden era studio right. time type of filmmaking. Sort of, yes. Now, it, now how, how do we begin to uh, bridge uh, the understanding of how things developed mm -hmm. in the 30s and the 40s and mm -hmm. how you guys have come this far mm -hmm. to co sort of what you off-screen dubbed mm -hmm. a renaissance mm -hmm. of filmmaking in Turkey. Mm -hmm. what, is, what is the difference? Right. A lot of things actually have, have changed since then. I mean, all around the world, not just in Turkey. First of all, we have, uh, you know, now multiplexes. I mean, the, the film-going culture has changed quite a lot. I mean, it was a prime sort of entertainment uh, all around the world. But nowadays, they have to compete with TV, internet, you know, all these other media is affecting. So it's the competition is a bit, bit more there. So, and um, now film culture has become part of a larger culture of, um, you know, commercial culture, let's say popular culture. Mm -hmm. So that's, that has changed. So it's kind of different these days. But if you look at the films and the genres, you can see a lot of similarities. I mean, uh, many films, many popular Turkish films right now is uh, sort of relying on those older films and they kind of, uh, 
uh, if not an homage, if they, they kind of, you know, there's kind of relation with these old Turkish films. But again, uh, um, maybe we can say the the, uh, the the biggest difference is probably is the now it's not just one sort of uh, type of movies. I mean, apart from a popular industry, or film industry, we have a, a very vibrant sort of independent film industry, which goes hand in hand with this sort of popular industry, which is good. I mean, which is sort of a the ideal situation probably I would say you know have this kind of both alternatives because uh, audience is not sort of you know that's homogeneous I mean you have different audiences so you know um, having that kind of diversity is, is really good um, I think building on, on, on the term homogeneous um, film itself worldwide do you not feel that the, 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 the film industry is somewhat of a campus of fraternities. So you have Hollywood on the one hand, on the one side, um, and then you kind of have the rest of the world um, looking on to see yes. what Hollywood is going to do next, and then come, kind of become homogenous within that space. Um, how do we bridge the gap? Mm, that's a difficult question. Um, but um, I would say, um, Okay, maybe in that sense, looking at the past might be helpful because if you look at the history uh, of the cinemas around the world, there has always been a kind of a national uh, sort of characteristic identity where you find these films, which not Hollywood cannot always cater. I mean, so there is a sort of um, um, let's say cultural difference, which is sort of you have to be catered, and um, so. Uh, that's a bit of a difficult. I mean, on the other hand, you see uh, films copying Hollywood sort of themes, genres. Yes. You know, yes. uh, the whole concept of genres came out of uh, you know, Hollywood cinema. So um, I think there has to be. Yeah, it's important to have some of the uh, elements, aspects of Hollywood cinema, perhaps, uh, because the audiences are all around the world familiar with, the, with those aspects but to bring in some something unique at the same time, which is, I don't know, I don't have a formula, but uh, I think it's the, the way, you know, we have to do. Yeah, it seems that there's a lot of, um, the manner with which Turkish films are told, mm -hmm. um, it appears to me that there's a lot of um, honesty. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of connection to one's roots. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of interest in ensuring that uh, the spirit of the culture mm -hmm. that birthed mm -hmm. uh, cinema in Turkey continues to be carried forward. Mm. Um, do you think that from a commercial perspective mm. um, that might be the reason why uh, Turkish film, if you feel in fact that Turkish film has reached mm. its peak, mm. might not be arriving at a point where we can celebrate it in the manner with which we celebrate big films in uh, Hollywood? Mm. Mm. Um, there again, I think, like we you know, uh, discussed before, there's lots of other uh, sort of audiovisual material available, not just film. And in that sense, I think what's important is to have this kind of uh, cooperation or link with the television industry and, and yes. film. Yes. And um, if you look at that way, uh, what's again important for the success of Turkish film industry is that uh, the television industry was, was at a kind of a worldwide success around, I mean, in the Middle East, in Europe, actually uh, in many places. Um, so that sort of uh, what's important there is that they raise money, the film industry support directors and actors as well. So that kind of helps the Turkish film industry to to connect and and uh, sort of you know get that kind of creative input from the TV industry. So I, I would say that um, that that has been very helpful for the film industry. Okay. Uh, now. You're an academic, yeah. right? Um, so, academically speaking, um, do you feel as though uh, cinema, whether it be domestic to Turkey or international, um, do you get the sense that there's a lack of um, understanding with regard to how to, be, to go about being procedural about the manner with which people build um, a film story um, versus how things are done everywhere else. In fact, there is, let, let us not, let's move away from comparison, yeah. but let's talk about if there is a need for people to apply a theoretical approach, still being practical, mm. to creating films. Mm. 
Okay. <laughs> um, first of all, I think it has to be open. I mean, it's not it doesn't have to be sort of you know uh, a closed sort of environment. Um, I think that's important. I mean, and not just to Hollywood, but to, to other parts of the world. What is I think we are lacking right now is that the rest of the world doesn't have a chance to um, you know circulate widely all around the world. So that's one thing important. And from a theoretical perspective, I would say. Of course, it sort of feds uh, the, the, the creativity in film, uh, but there has to be a kind of a, I mean, it's kind of a bit contradicting myself now, but I mean, uh, sometimes it's better that you don't have to, you know, it's, because you have to still believe that uh, kind of you're doing something for the first time, you're achieving something, you know, which is... You're the first person you're doing this, but when you are coming from a theoretical perspective, you always think that, well, that has been done before, so why am I repeat this? Uh, so there has to be kind of a, maybe a, again, a, a, a sort of a, a, a limit to theoretical uh, sort of input in, in film, filmmaking, I guess. Uh, it always helps, but then again, artistic sort of uh, intelligence or creativity is built upon something with f more with feelings rather than uh, I don't know uh, theories yeah okay Dr. Kurata uh, before we let you go in conclusion um, as someone who has grown up in Turkey uh, you've interacted with the story of Turkey um, you are indigenous uh, to the lifestyle and culture of Turkey you were here showcasing the Turkish uh, film festival Obviously, that kind of means that you are looking for ways of communicating with the world. Yeah. You want to understand how they tell their stories. Yes. And of course, you anticipate that they want to understand how you tell yours. Yeah. And people can collaborate from there. Yeah. What would you conclude um, is the way forward uh, with regard to how we interact and how we tell our stories? Yeah. I think this shows that this sort of um, this showcase of Turkish cinema shows that we really need to hear stories from other parts of the world. And it's very difficult to, to get hold of these kind of stories. So my uh, sort of um, you know suggestion would be we have to find ways to circulate films, circulate stories all around the world, and we have to build sort of environment for this kind of uh, activities uh, everywhere. Thank you.